So Nicholas Kenyon is a former controller of Radio 3, director of the BBC Proms, and for the last 13 years, managing director of the Barbican Centre in the City of London. So Nick, you're running a programme of COVID safe hybrid musical events at the moment. You've got exhibitions and your restaurants are open, although obviously, I guess, uh, operating uh, below normal capacity. But you do have the benefit of support from the Corporation of London, and the, but the cultural landscape of uh, London generally uh, uh, over the next few years is likely to be pretty bleak. Uh, what, what's your prognosis? Oh, I wouldn't necessarily say bleak. I would definitely say challenged. But everything that we are doing at the Barbican at the moment is with a view to helping re-entry into London's life, London's cultural life. And I think what we're showing is that even in the middle of the virus and all the things that flow from that, we are able to provide a safe and welcoming environment for people to come back and enjoy the arts. So we've taken very seriously, for instance, researching the people who are coming back to our offer and 98% of people that we have researched say that they feel safe or very safe coming back to the Barbican. And so that is absolutely essential to us because I think all these things are going to depend on public confidence in the end, aren't they? They're going to uh, depend on people's wish to come back. Now, we may be, with the current restrictions, slightly swimming against the tide in that respect, because we're trying to encourage people to come back into the city. But in that, we're aligning ourselves with retail and restaurants and the whole business of people re-encountering what it means to come together. Because that, that's what the arts is fundamentally about. It is about people coming together to share experiences. Um, so I think in your intro, you said we were doing slightly more than we are doing. Um, we, had to, we had to start very carefully with reopening the art gallery because we could do that with social distancing and timed tickets. And then um, we opened the conservatory as a free public offer. We then opened the Curve Gallery, uh, again that's free to the public and has been doing really well in attendance terms. And the most recent is the set of music, uh, um, 12 concerts, um, both classical and non-classical, which have been going really well. And the interesting thing about them is that they have been done both as live events for a socially distanced audience in the hall, and streamed events. And they've been set up so they look really great on screen. It's not just a question of sticking a camera in front of a, a, of a concert, it's a question of doing it in an imaginative way. And I think that's one of the things we're feeling now that streaming and the live event are gonna go alongside each other probably for quite a long time now. Yes, I think we're finding exactly the same at NLA too. But uh, last week, the City of London published uh, uh, London Recharged, a vision for uh, the whole of uh, the city, actually, in uh, 2025, city with a small c, uh, but uh, with lots of interesting suggestions around topics like innovation, digital change and inclusivity. Um, uh, while the Culture Mile provided actually some of the key illustrations about the role of culture, I couldn't find in the report that it mentioned culture at all as a part of London's and the city's strengths as an attractor of global business. So did I miss something? I mean, especially as the Lord Mayor set up a task force on culture and commerce, of which I believe you're a member. I, I am, and uh, the London Recharged Report is, is a really interesting piece of work, uh, really well done. Uh, I think it's true that you have to burrow around slightly for the references to culture, but there are quotes in it from Sean Gregory, our uh, innovation and engagement head at the Barbican, saying how creativity must be a part of what brings people back to the city, and that is the whole thrust of the Lord Mayor's uh, um, commerce and culture task force that he set up um, because what we need to show and uh, it is there in the London Recharged report is that culture 
is much more than just putting on arts events. It is the whole thing which has underpinned Culture Mile as a project from the beginning to do with the public realm, to do with communities and how people can enjoy themselves on a local basis. And as you can imagine, that's come much more to the fore during the, the lockdown and the period that has followed, where, you know, Barbican, an organisation that prides itself on being uh, international and wide ranging, has focused really on what it can do for the local community. And Culture Mile, for instance, has been taking play packs uh, into uh, the surrounding area, not just of Culture Mile, but of the boroughs that adjoin the city, into areas where they're not internet rich, not digital rich, and uh, there are physical things that they can engage with and, and um, benefit from. So uh, I think Culture Mile has had to really reorientate itself during this period, and it can show that it can be a really important part of, of the city reopening. Um, we want people to be able to walk to Culture Mile. Uh, walking, cycling, as you know, Peter, it is going to be a big feature of, of the, the future environment for the city. And that's something that we want cultures to support at every turn. So uh, but one, one of the great future features of the Culture Mile will be the Centre for Music. So is the pandemic impacting on the progress of that? Well, I think the pandemic is impacting on on the progress of all sorts of, of major projects. So no, in, prin in principle not, but as you know, the uh, whole proposition for the Centre for Music was that it will occupy the current site of the Museum of London. And at present, there is not yet a confirmed date for the museum to move to its new premises in West Smithfield. Uh, and so Centre for Music is there, uh, design, the concept design, really brilliant, wonderful, inclusive design by Dilla Scafidio, which is waiting there. But what you may have seen um, happened in the last couple of weeks was that the city supported uh, the redevelopment of Bastion House, which is the commercial block that sits next to uh, and over part of the museum. So that is the next stage to get that to planning permission and to a visual design, which will really improve the public realm of that area, which is so rich in its heritage assets. And a, a brilliant building like Centre for Music um, needs to be given the context of a really revitalized public realm. The uh, impact of the pandemic, to go back to that, has, as we were just saying, been to accelerate the thinking about walking and the city's urban spaces. And if you think about it, just there by the current Museum of London, where um, a centre for music could be in the future, there's 2000 years of history with the Roman wall, which really needs much better landscaping and public realm design than it benefits from at the moment. Uh, so there is absolutely plenty going on, uh, but as you can imagine, it's a set of um, dominoes and jigsaw pieces, each of which has to fall into place for this really big scheme in the northwest of the city to bear fruit. But in terms of improving public spaces, you've also turned Beach Street is now uh, zero carbon, is it not? Or is pollution free? It is a zero emission zone. So only you can bike through it or a uh, all electric uh, car or taxi can go through it. And of course it has dramatically, dramatically reduced the amount of traffic there and so improved the pollution, the, uh, uh, the, the um, uh, removal of the pollution from the area. Uh, uh, we see this only as the very first stage um, because it hasn't actually been able to go so far as to improve the public look of the area, 
or the uh, attractiveness of that uh, really quite difficult space. And that's why we see this as part of a bigger project which would involve eventually the um, reuse of the Barbican's exhibition halls, which are on the north side of that Beach Street uh, um, uh, underpass, and um, would lead to a much more inclusive community focused and visible um, area there. Um, it's interesting, one of the things I've been doing in the lockdown is, is uh, looking at the history of the Barbican because we turn 40 in 2022. And it's very interesting how the various aspects of the design uh, developed. And of course that Beach Street uh, was not meant to have any people in it at all. It was designed as a traffic route under the podium level of the Barbican, which was where everybody was going to walk around, which would be populated with shops and, and so on. And uh, uh, it just never quite happened because there weren't the connections between the high level routes of the Barbican and the rest of the city that were in, in, uh, originally envisaged. So uh, tell me, what, what was your response to the recent report by Lord Lisvane into the governance of the city? And because it suggested that the Barbican uh, should have greater independence than it does at the moment, did it not? Well, I'm very, I'm very impressed that you've read it in, in so much detail. Uh, I think we were all um, very, very impressed by what a thorough piece of work uh, Lord Lisbon had done. And I think it's fair to say that the discussion of the report has only just begun at the governance level of the city. So we will be taking part in that uh, discussion as it goes forward, but it's essentially for members to uh, agree the way they want to go. We do not, the Barbican does not want in any way to cut its links with the city. We are an absolutely vital part of what the city corporation does. And, and you don't need any further demonstration of that than the support that the corporation has given us during this whole pandemic period. That's been absolutely indispensable and a, and a fantastic commitment to the work of the Barbican. What we do need is greater independence in terms of being able to operate efficiently and effectively uh, uh, in a joined up way as part of the arts ecology. And at the moment, there are too many city processes which make that difficult to achieve. So we hope that what the Lord Lisbane report will lead towards is a situation where the different bits of the city are still linked together but are able to operate in the best possible way in order to realize the success of their business. So Nicholas, can you thank, thank, thank you very much indeed for your insights and uh, thank you for championing culture, which I believe is absolutely essential if uh, the center of London is going to re recover and we're going to uh, retain our role as a global city. So thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. And thank you for your role in championing culture as well.